Hi Floss Tube. My name is Sue. Um, I go by the name Susie Reno. That is my name on YouTube and also my Instagram name. And I'm going to give this Floss Tube thing a try. I've been encouraged by um, my friend Teresa, Kitten Stitcher, and Jen from Jen Stitching Niche and um, Michelle Farm Girl and Michelle Bendy Stitchy um, to give floss tube videos a try so I thought that I would. Um, I was very inspired this weekend. I was lucky enough to be able to go to Nashville Needlework Market this past weekend and it was amazing as usual. Um, I helped out in, in Teresa's booth in um, Shakespeare's Peddler is her um, sampler or design name. Her, she does a lot of reproduction samplers and some original samplers that are really cool that look old. Um, she has a, Teresa has a really cool funky style and, um, and my connection to Teresa is that she and I used to be raised the roof designs together. So we started that together and I think it was like 2003 or so, 2003 or 2004 I think. Um, when she was still living in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm in central Minnesota. So I would I met her because I would go to her retreats. She used to have a shop up in Fargo, Shakespeare's Peddler, and um, I would go up there to her retreats, and that's how we met. And then we had a very similar style, and we started designing together, and um, we have a ball. Every I, I really only get to see her maybe once or twice uh, probably once a year or once every two years sometimes but whenever we get together we just pick up right where we left off so she's she's a dear friend and um, and we had a great time doing it we did it until about <clears throat> I think it was 2011 when I got out of it and I got out of it mainly because my I I have a full-time job my real job is as a respiratory therapist and um, I was doing the designing in addition to it and I had you know small kids I think my kids were seven and three when I got into it and I think that it's a it's a great business to have it was never like not profitable but it was so much work so you know literally you you're, you never have downtime and that was hard it was kind of like um, it, my life was just passing me by and I just got to the point where I was like I, it wasn't fun anymore. It just made it so that my hobby wasn't fun anymore. So I, I um, got out of it. Teresa kept doing it for a little while, and then she took a break too, and you know was managing a shelter and and tried some different jobs. But um, I think she's gonna get back into it a little bit. I think she's kind of done some soul searching and figured some stuff out and I think she's gonna be doing a lot more designing or at least I hope so because her style is really she's she's a person that really thinks outside the box and if you ever get a chance to meet her she's really in a really fun individual like she just has this charisma and this sense of humor that is like no other so anyway I'm it was it was great to spend the weekend with her so I'm going to jump right into it and show you, um, I'll start off with my whips and then I will also um, show you the haul at, that I got this weekend at market. There were a lot of really, really fun, cute things. So I'll start off with this one. Um, this one is, I'll show you the picture first. So this one is like my travel project or my car project. This is Be Friend by Nikki from Nikki's Creations or Nikki's Creation Nikki Nikki's Creation Primitives. So it's just a sweet little sampler. I think she released this in um, Nashville last year, 2017. And this is my progress on it. It's really cute. I did change some things. I changed the color of this house. Um, on the when you see it, Nikki's colors are very, very muted, and, and they're beautiful. Um, that's her, her style, but I just felt like the house is kind of blended in with the grass. So I, I made this house blue. I might make the other one blue. I don't know. I'm going to just kind of play it by ear and see what I think. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll just play it by ear. But that's, 
my progress on my travel project. So I got to, like, I got the bunnies and the, the flowers and the foreground done this weekend um, when I was traveling to market. Um, the next one I have is one that I am working on that I originally saw at um, uh, Jen's house of Jen Stitch and Niche. She has um, she has a really beautiful house. She and her husband built a house in Hattiesburg. On they, their family has some land, and um, they it's really really cool. The the house is just phenomenal. She has these. I know it'll sound so strange, but she has these black cement floors in the house that are amazing. They look so cool. It sounds so stupid, but it's it's a cool. Trust me, it's awesome. So I took a picture of Jen's sampler. She did, this is Anniversaries of the Heart, and she did it. This is actually um, the sampler that Jen did, but what I did to make kind of, I, I didn't like, I, I just kind of switched them around. I wanted to make it my own, and so I, I um, printed out the picture that I took of her sampler, and I cut them all up because it's like 12 different leaflets and some of them have more than one design but um, this one is like a bigger one that's the one I'm the square I'm working on right now but at any rate I just kinda cut it up and each one is supposed to be dedicated to someone in your family someone special or a special friend or you know your parents or your child or whatever so, and that's why they call it Anniversaries of the Heart. Um, they, because it's just little things that um, you are, that are special to you and people who are special to you. So I'll show my progress on it here. Let's see if I can get this. So I have three of them done, well, two and a half of them done. Um, so this one, the hardest part about this, I think, is the fact that you have to, um, you end up having to um, personalize everything. So there's a fair amount of charting. Now in this part right down here is supposed to be like personalization over one thread. So I do have it all charted now and so it won't be so bad um, to jump into that. But that's, that's one of my works in progress. Um, let's see what else here. Um, and then my other work in progress, um, I'm going to have to wait to show you that because what I'm doing, here's what I can show you. I can show you, uh, so I'm in a, okay, let me, let me start at the beginning. I am in a sampler exchange with, um, Teresa and Jen from Jen Stitch and Niche and Kathy Krause who lives in Wisconsin, who is, um, uh, she's a very, she's a really fantastic stitcher. She does a lot of model stitching. I know she's done models for Plum Street, um, um, among many others. So she's a, a quite a beautiful, she does beautiful work, beautiful work. So the four of us are in a sampler exchange. And so every nine months we send a finished sampler and, and the parameters are around eight by 10, like as far as size goes. Um, and each person could say, like I said, I want, you know, I, I, like, for example, Kathy doesn't like Adam and Eve samplers. She doesn't enjoy those. Um, and neither does Jen, actually, I guess. Or she, she said she doesn't. Kathy really likes Quaker samplers. Um, I said, you know, I'm, I want to, I, I really like samplers with the color red. Teresa was like, I don't care. I like it all. So... So we have been swapping samplers. So we have had one installment. I've received one sampler, and um, Teresa had my name. And that's a secret. We don't know who has each other's names. And we won't, I mean, at the last one, obviously, process of elimination, we'll know who we're stitching for. But um, so Teresa had my name, and this is what she sent me, Sisters of the Broom. And it is really cool. It's a very cool Halloween-y piece. And what's neat about it is that, I don't know if you can, I'll put it on this here, I don't know if that helps. Um, what's really neat about it is the fact that I have to kind of stand up here. All right. So what's cool about it is that if you look by each gal's, 
by each of those witches, they all have an initial by them. So, for example, the T is Teresa, the K is for Kathy, the um, J, that's Jen, and then the S, this is, this is me. So, we are all sisters of the broom. And it's just a really cool, like, spooky sort of sampler. I mean, these birds, you know what I like about these birds? Like, look at how their feet are kind of like curled under. They sort of, they sort of look like they're dead, I think. Anyway, which is kind of creepy and weird. Like, oh, look at those dead flying zombie birds. They're even green. Um, and like this hourglass over here, I, I love that. So yeah, it's really cool. I, I really, really like it. So I have a frame for this. I just have to get around to, you know, framing it. I, I have it all picked out. It's real cool. It's got like wormwood. It, it's real pockmarked and it goes with it really well. So, so that's cool. Um, so my, my, my other work in progress, I, I don't, I can't show you because that would give it away. Maybe in another video, I'll show my whips at the end and then I'll tell, um, because it'll be, it'll be either my, my sampler is going to either be for Teresa or it's going to be for Kathy that the one that I'm working on because I had Jen's name um I don't know if she if she has shown the the one that I stitched for her or not on her floss tube I guess I don't know but I I did a old um Mary Gary sewing cabin one for Jen so maybe she'll show it or maybe she already did I don't know so so I can't show it but maybe in a in a future video if I do another one of these um I'll show you what it looks like at the end so so I'm going to show you what I got from market um and and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, so the first one first thing I got was from Blackbird. It's called Deck the Halls. And this is a bunch of little it there's six strawberry patterns in it. And one of them I I lost my mind. I was so excited. I I don't know why. I I don't know why. But this one it's a pelican, you guys. It's a pelican. There's a pelican on a strawberry. How cool is that? I don't know. Who's ever... I've never stitched a pelican. I just think it's cool. I... Anyway. And there's a bunch in here that are so cute. So, I, I know these strawberries are super easy to finish and make. And I just need to, to whip them out. So, but there's six different ones in here. Look at... There's a little quail. The first day of Christmas. A little quail. And it's so cute. But those strawberries, they just get me. So, I, I love the strawberries. So, I... I thought, oh, a book of six strawberries, I gotta get it. So, and their other stuff was really cute too. Um, Lori Markovic at La Dida, she, um, when Teresa and I were at market one year with Raise the Roof, she had the booth right next to us, and um, I stopped in there to say hi to her, and she was so sweet. She gave me one of her new patterns. So, she has this series of new, what she's calling fetish patterns. So, you can see up here, you know, fetish number one. Um, she said, we've all run out of wall space, which we know, and so, you know, kind of like Yvonne's dough bowls, um, Yvonne, you know, well, and I think a lot of people have dough bowls, and not that, you know, it, Yvonne came up with it, but it, everybody's doing neat stuff with little dough bowls and things like that, little tchotchkes in, in bowls and stands and cute stuff, and displays, that's the word I'm looking for, displays. Um, so Lori, these are a little bit bigger, and so she's doing a series, I think she had, she had a, at least, did she have six of them there? I don't know, don't quote me on that, but she had several fetish patterns that were so cute, so she gave me that one, because I just loved it, I was, I just stopped in to say hi, because, you know, when, when you're exhibiting in the booth, you have to, like, do sales and orders and stuff, and so, when there's kind of a lull, one of us will say, you want to go? You want to run out? Because we want to see all the stuff at market too, but it gets hard, you know, because then you leave one in the booth and we always take our phone and, you know, we're like, hey, I'm swamped, get back here, you know, or whatever. So, um, then I stopped at Tanya's booth, Tanya Brockmeyer with the Scarlet House, and this is her new sampler. It's so cute, the Anna Grader sampler. It is so darn cute, all done. Of course, you know, these samplers all look better in person than they do on the cover. I mean... You know, I don't think anyone's ever been like, oh, the sampler was so much cuter on the cover than when it was stitched. Nobody ever says that. So, um, I went to Beth's booth, um, Beth with, um, 
heartstring samplery, Beth Twist, and she has she had a um, a little house on the prairie sampler. And Minnesota girl had to have it. Got to have the little house sampler. So the other ones that I got from her, um, her th she's got these little things she calls festive little fobs. And so there's this one. There's this one. So this is stitching edition. This one is Valentine edition. And they're just cute little motifs. And I also got the spring edition, but she sold out of that one. So I had to, um, she's going to ship it. And I'll, she sold out of the Little House on the Prairie one too. So um, so those, those what I, my plan is, I saw this online and I should, I, I need to figure out the name of the person that I saw it so I can give them credit. But they took a printer's box. You get, you know what I mean by a printer's box, right? It's the thing that, um, you know, it has lots of little um, blocks and squares and people would put little miniatures into them and everything. Are you going? Are you taking off, buddy? This is our cat train, by the way. Come here. You want to say hello? No? He's, he is a very, very sweet boy. He is 15 years old this spring. And he is just, he's our only pet. He gets all the attention, all the love. And he's a very, very good boy, aren't you? Yes. And so handsome. Look at how handsome he is. So handsome. Um, anyway, getting back to the, the scissor, or the, the little festive little fobs from Beth Twist. So, um, the printer's boxes. I, there's a lady, I think she's from Europe. She might be from England. I have to find her name so that I can give her credit um, in the video here. But um, she has... She'll do little motifs to fit each box, and then she just wraps it around a piece of foam cord and sticks it in there, and it's so cute. And I'm like, I need to do that because I have a printer's box in the basement I'm not using, so I need to jump on it. So that's why I got those. And then her spring fobs are super cute too, the new the new set. And and there's you can pull a motif out of anywhere. I mean, you can pull it out of any sampler or or anything. So yeah, um, I got this one. This one Teresa gave to me. This is oops shiny. Um, this is called a sampling by Anne. So there is a big reproduction sampler that Teresa did called um, the Anne Grant sampler. And Anne, I mean, it's, it's big. It's a big reproduction. And so what Teresa did is she took just a few of the motifs from that and she did um, a smaller sampler, just in case you didn't want to stitch the whole stinking thing. She did this little smaller one, and it is so cute. It's very um, Plum Streety, I think. I don't know. I think it's very Plum Streety. Um, the next one I got, I oh, I actually got this from Nikki. We we actually traded a pattern for. <laughs> I had bought something, and then she anyway. It was we traded, and so this is her pattern called. Mary Sampler, and it's a Christmas sampler, and she, she was telling us about um, how she was so disappointed with the photography on it. She said, it's such a pretty sampler, because we were talking about, have you ever, have you ever, you know, had a, uh, um, sorry, my cat is bumping the stand here, um, have you ever had a sampler where it just didn't, you were so upset with how it came out, and so she had um, mentioned that one, and when I saw it, I really liked it. And I happened to have some of her sage linen that that is stitched on, so I was like, well, let's trade. So she took a different one that I had. Um, this next one was one of my favorite things at market. Um, it's really cool done. So this is the, this is from Chessie and Me, and this one is called the Esther... Edison 1832 sampler and this is a reproduction and Linda did an amazing job on the reproduction. It looks phenomenal and so fantastic. I'm sorry about the light. Maybe let me try taking it out and see if that helps because I also have she has a picture of the original in here also. <laughs> and sorry the glare is actually on that photo so I can't get rid of that. See glare's there. So <laughs> we're Fighting glare with glare. So this is the original, and it was in pretty good shape. And it has a little um, guy on here over on the right, 
and it's so unusual. So you almost can't see him. It, he's right there, and he's almost the same color as the background. He's all one color, and the lettering right there, I don't know if you can see. So he's got a dog on a leash, and he's got like a stick, and it says, poor, poor blind man is what it says on there. Poor, poor blind man. And so I'm wondering if that person was, was he albino? Is that why he is like completely white? Because you can see this guy and he's got, you know, you can see def, the can even speak the definition between his head and his clothes and everything. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It, I just thought it was really, really, really cool. Um, who's ever seen a blind guy on a sampler before? It was, and her reproduction was just gorgeous. It was just so pretty. I know my, again, the picture never does it justice, but I told her that was one of my favorite things that I saw at market. Um, I picked this one up from Needlework Press, Janet Spears. I think this one came out last year at market. I think, I think it was last year. Um, I think it actually says somewhere. Yeah, 2017. Yep, I was right. And it's just a really fun little sampler, and you can see the original was right there. So it was in kind of tough shape down at the bottom. She said they had to kind of make up some some stuff for like, um, like right here. It was kind of all washed away or worn away. So they kind of made up some stuff right here. So, but it's really a neat sampler. I like that one a lot. Um, I think she said it's Scottish. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. And then this one, it, it, the, I didn't realize this, by the way, until I got home. So this is the Janet Spears. I got home, and then I saw that this one was also a, a spear, spire, but they're, they're just a little different. One has an S at the end, and, the, and then that E and the I are mixed up, like they're swapped. Anyway, I just thought that was weird. I, I didn't notice it till I got home. But this little sampler was so darn cute all finished. It's got um, three little cows right here that are all like the identical pattern but different colors. It's got the little milkmaid walking down the path here with her milk going to the milk house. Um, it's got this big beautiful house right here. You can't see it here but um, on this is where it says um, Sue's I think it says Susanna Spear, actually, here, and then the date. So, do you want to get out? Well, you're going to have to wait a minute. Come on over here. Um, so this was really, really pretty done. And this was by Queenstown Sampler Designs. Who I'd never really heard of before. The guy in there, though, was so darn nice. He was really funny. His wife was out and about. Another thing that I got at Market, sometimes booths will just have um, little tchotchkes and things also that they sort of do on the side in addition to needlework. And I wish for the life of me I could remember who had, whose booth I got this in. But I just thought it was so pretty. It's made out of a spoon, an old spoon, so they just like cut it off and looped it over. But I'm kind of a sucker for birds. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's a spoon. It's got, um, inside it's just got some like scrapbooky letters and stuff in it. Um... It's got a little scissor charm, like a stork scissor charm. It's got a blue button. And then this little thing is a, a butterfly, a little blue morpho butterfly. That's the type of butterfly it is. I don't know why I know that, but I do. But um, anyway, I just thought it was so pretty. And it, I just was like, I, I need that. I love birds. I love birds. I'm such a sucker for birds, um, which, <laughs> which leads me into this next thing. I'm going to show some of my FFOs. And um, this is a bird. This was actually one of Teresa's from 2015. And um, it is a, oh, what is it? Fractor Bird, it's called. And so she finished it as a pin cushion. And the kit actually comes with, um, you stuff it with whatever you want. And then there's a piece of jute that you wrap around it. And it comes with a little black thread spool. And you just tie that on with it. And it looks so cute. And she actually, um, she has more of these now because um, I'm sure you can find them in like Jen's Stitch and Niche shop or something. Um, 
but Teresa made some more of these for this last market because they did sell out. She didn't expect it to. She was just like, oh, I, I'll just, you know, sometimes she did that, would do that for market. She was just like, oh, I've got these things and, and I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll use them and I'll cut it out and this is what I'll make. So, so she made a bunch of kits in 2015. They were a big hit and they sold out. And so she said, I'm going to, I'm going to make some more of those. So she did. So she has more and more available. If you really like that one, you can get that one, I'm sure. Ask Jen from Jen Stitch and Mitch on her Etsy shop. So this one I will show you. This is actually, um, I finished this um, this past October at, at the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat, actually. This is the Lizzie Kate Things Unseen sampler. And... Um, I, I did kind of switch some stuff up on this one. So it's got all these bees on it here. You know, there's like all kinds, and one big bee here, this must be the queen. But they didn't have a house. They like, where are all these bees going? And so it had some sheep that were here, and I'm, I'm not a big sheep person. I'm just kind of, I don't know. I, they're cute, but I, I don't know. I don't live on a farm. I don't know sheep. So I got rid of the sheep. And I just like freehanded a big bee skip. I just was like, they need a house. So, and I put their house next to this one. This house was, I think, supposed to be this color. And I swapped it to be pink because, I don't know, I just like the pink house. So I just kind of switched it up a bit and added, you know, I just, yeah, that's the nice thing about cross stitches. You can kind of take your own liberties and do whatever you want. So, so that's my things unseen. I just have to get a frame for it. Um, I didn't put the buttons on. There were buttons that were that could go here and here that came with it. And I don't know. They just didn't do it for me. And there's also some antique buttons that can go on here. And I haven't put those on either. I am I might not put any buttons on it. And there's beads that go on it too. But I just kind of like it plain. So I might just leave it plain. So, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm just going to end it with that this time. I'm just going to, this will be my first floss tube. I I like um, floss tube videos that are around 20 minutes long because I don't have a lot of time to, to spend watching floss tube. Like, I wish I had more time, but, you know, I, I watch floss tube when I'm folding laundry or, um, you know, when I'm just kind of in between tasks when I'm at home. I'm just going to end it right here. So, um... I, I hope that uh, you all have a great week. Thanks.